Cowabunga dudes! Today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at the Shadow Warriors 2-pack. This is the latest and greatest movie release from NECA Toys for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie. We of course get Oroku Saki and Hamato Yoshi in this, basically Shredder and aka Splinter's master slash owner. This is a little bit of a prequel slash origin story for their feud and basically what you know events transpire to lead on into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles creation. This is a Walmart exclusive in the United States. $49.96 is the retail price. Packaging looks pretty standard, just your basic standard 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles NECA toy release. So if you're in the box collector, this is gonna match with all your other movie figures. On the left, you got some glam shots. And on the right, you got some glam shots. Of course, you got a Roku on one side, Hamato on the other. You also get some more glam shots here on the back left hand corner. You got a TMNT movie picture down here in the bottom right hand corner. You get a little bit of a brief description of the characters and their blood feud, the Shadow Warriors. And on top, you've just got the basic 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo. Bottom, there's your barcode. Uh, I will tell you when I did purchase this at Walmart, they did struggle to uh, be able to get this to ring up in the register. So uh, your mileage may vary. And in sculpting and fabrication, we have Trevor Zamet, Trevor Grove, and Roger Fernandez to thank for these figures. But let's go ahead and get them out of the plastic prison and check them out up close and personal. First up, let's check out Uroku Saki. He's got his head-to-toe kimono slash gi on. Uh, this is not soft goods. It's, it's you know, soft pliable plastic, but it, it's not uh, cloth fabric or anything like that. And even the belt, it's not a ribbon. So... The, the belt strands, the ends itself are gonna lay flat no matter what, which is nice. Uh, his kimono itself has a nice kind of glittery sheen to it, adds some nice depth and texture to it instead of just being a drab flat black, even though they are the shadow warriors, so it makes sense for everything to be black head to toe, but it does add some nice detail. Face sculpt and everything looks great. Details on there I think were nice. Paint application, no issues, no out of the line work, no wonky eyebrows or anything like that. Uh, just, you know, bare feet because he is, you know, a ninjutsu practitioner. But overall, looks great. Articulation on Rokusaki is going to be the exact same as Hamato Yoshi, so we'll go ahead and cover two figures, two birds, one stone. So his head's going to look down that far. He's going to go look up that far. Going to get side. The side and of course exorcist 360 degree shoulder is going to go up and out you're going to be able to rotate the shoulder 360 degree Got double jointed elbows which are nice and you're going to be able to rotate both sides of the elbow so the upper portion and the lower portion are going to have a 360 degree rotation and then you're going to have a horizontal hinge at the wrist and 360 degree swivel on that as well now i've got his elbow all wonky but it's fine he can just sit there and do the robot he does have an upper torso ab crunch, but this kimono is going to prevent him from being able to bend as much. So you can take it off if you want more flexibility. Um, there is interchangeable arms, so you don't have to worry about having a you know shirtless Oroku Saki with sleeves. You can actually interchange the sleeveless attachment accessories that come with it. But with the kimono, you're gonna be able to get him to crunch that far forward that far backwards, so pretty good. You can rotate 360 degree at the hip, of course. Legs are gonna kick that far forward, that far backwards, and that's as far wide as you're gonna get on a split test. Then you're gonna have double jointed knees, so you'll be able to kick your butt. You're gonna have a knee cut, so you can spin 360 degree at the knee line. You're going to have the ankle being able to go that far down, that far up, and then you're gonna have side to side motion and standard peg holes at the bottom of his feet. So great articulation overall, what we've come to expect from NECA Toys. He stands pretty well on his own, which is impressive. Uh, I don't feel like I need to have a giant figure stand underneath him, which has been you know, an issue with some of their other figures just because some of them are top heavy. But overall, great job on Roku Saki. Let's go ahead and check out some of his accessories here and talking about how well he stands and I couldn't get him balanced. So as I mentioned previously, he does come with some sleeveless arm accessories so you can completely remove his top gi top and switch out the arms and then you can have him shirtless. He's got, you know, these nice little gauntlet bracers on his forearms, but you got a left and a right arm, empty hands, 
has a secondary face sculpt, and this is the one that most people are gonna be the most excited about. I think this is the one where Splinter has scratched and permanently scarred his face. So he's got that angry, evil expression. Got some nice uh, blood paintwork there on the nose and the cheek, as well as the lips. So good job on the face sculpt there. He comes with some interchangeable hands. So you have two shaking hands is what I always call these. Just open palm, thumb up. And then you'll have two quasi closed fists. That way you can put accessories and weapons inside. And speaking of splinter, we'll go ahead and mention this. So there's two different splinters. You get this one. This is the one that attaches to Oroko Saki's face, specifically this face. So you're gonna put these on top of each other and this splinter will lock on and you'll be able to scratch his face with this figure. And secondly, you're going to have Splinter in his training stance. He's you know mimicking what he's seeing from his master. And one thing to note, the tail is kind of fused onto his foot there, which is great because honestly, if the tail was separate, 99% uh, chance we'd all accidentally break it off. So that is the tail. And speaking of Splinter, we gotta go ahead and bring in his master, Hamato Yoshi, into the picture again. Another great looking detailed figure, the musculature, the paint job, everything looks great on him. The face sculpt specifically looks awesome. Very well detailed, no mismatched line work. So nice texture, nice detail. Um, he doesn't come with the gi top on, but he does come with a different accessory to where you can swap it on there. So you can have him looking identical to Shredder because he also comes with two sleeved arms. So if you want both figures to look pretty close to identical, you just throw on the gi top and those sleeve armed accessories and then you'll have matching figures for each other. Same articulation as Oroku Saki as I mentioned so we won't cover that but as we're talking about Hamato Yoshi we gotta again bring up Splinter. Mention that we have the little Splinter figure where he's doing his little poses he's watching his master. So we also have the little bird cage and the way this works is you're gonna pop off the bottom. You're gonna notice there's a little peg right there and at the bottom of Splinter, there's a little peg hole. Situate it there. Put your birdcage top back on. And it does come with a little stand. I say little, it's actually, you know, the height of our figures. And it just hooks on there like so. And then voila, you've got Splinter in a cage doing his ninjutsu practition as he watches his master do his thing. As far as scale for these figures, go ahead and get the tape measure out. They're sitting right at the seven inch mark. So as advertised, as in line with the movie scale, here we have a, you know, movie foot soldier for comparison as I knock over Oroku. All right, there we go. There's a foot soldier for comparison. And then let's get the movie shredder out here for comparison with Oroku Saki. And as you can see there, neck and neck with each other so everything's good there scale wise gotta love it um great looking figures come with a ton of weapons so let's go ahead and talk about the weapons so you're getting matching weapons for each character essentially you're getting two battle axes you're gonna get two bow staffs you're gonna get two katana swords and these are actually a little softer than previous releases so you shouldn't have to worry about these snapping as easily uh, some earlier releases from NECA, these katana swords were prone to just break right there at the hilt. So these got some nice bend to them, so you shouldn't have to worry about them snapping. And you got some bow staff, not bow staff, excuse me, night sticks. So you got two night sticks. And this is the only thing that really changes. You get two nunchuck, nunchucka, however you want to pronounce it. This one has some studs on the handle and a metal chain. The second one, no studs, no metal chain, just a wire, so this one can pose, but that is the weapons in a nutshell. Like I said, tons and tons of weapons, tons of accessories, hands, arms, geese, uh, interchangeable face, freaking rat in a cage. I mean, it's a great set, $49.99, I think is an absolute reasonable price. 
and happy hunting guys because as of right now you can't buy this online and it's not really showing up on Brickseek, but that may change i'll go ahead and put the upc information down in the video description box below but if you enjoyed the content make sure you hit that like button share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful and as always thanks for watching guys it really means a lot